Another day, another chapter in the whole Michigan sign-stealing investigation, which has now expanded. It's not just the Michigan sign-stealing investigation. It is the Big Ten sign-stealing investigation slash scandal slash conundrum. You probably woke up this morning and went to your job or went off to school because you're a normal human who has a life to live. But elsewhere in college athletics, it was a Tuesday. We got big games on the docket for Saturday, but no one was talking about it because everyone was talking about multiple multiple reports now as of just after five o'clock central time today that detail how, lo and behold, it wasn't just Michigan stealing signs in the Big Ten. There was a fairly coordinated effort last year to share information behind the scenes between multiple universities in the Big Ten, and that information was Michigan's signs that they had acquired, and it was basically trafficking of information behind the scenes to take down a familiar foe, and that foe is Michigan. I want you to know that because that's the details, that's the what, and the why is pretty obvious. But what do you think about that? If I just told you basically what we know, those were several reports that came out today. I mean, the the folks over at SI went as far as, I think Richard Johnson and Forty had like actual PDF screenshots of some of the documents. And by the way, do you people not possess the capability to do things off of these devices? It, it's called a paper trail. I know it's called a paper trail. You, you don't have to physically have paper. Like if you have a Google Doc, that's paper, guys. You can't be leaving this stuff behind. I'm going to leave that out there because Meemaw would never have me make an argument like that. Meemaw would just say, keep it clean. But if you're not going to keep it clean, but <laughs> word of mouth, word of mouth works okay. Hand-drawn. Look, I still go hand-drawn notes on this show for a reason. I don't want any record of this. What if I make a wrong prediction? I don't want any record of that. But there you guys went, several of you up there. Did you really think the lips would be that sealed shut? And of course they weren't. So today we get this report. Michigan says, well, if you're going to screw us, we're taking the rest of you down with us. What did I think about that? I didn't think much of it at all because it was very expected. I should have said on the show last week what I told our staff and what a lot of coaches frankly, had admitted. And that was, hey, we had this going on. Um, This was done not just in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The devil was in the details. So a lot of this information was kind of known behind the scenes. It was just that, hey, we didn't acquire the information like they acquired the information. You need to focus on how they acquired the information. And frankly, that's not the worst point in the world. But I think now, You've got so much noise in the room and the lights are so bright in the room now that it's really hard to just put the noise cancellation headphones on, put the racehorse blinders on, and just focus on what's important. What's important is were rules broken to gain a competitive advantage. Now, I know this makes me sound 10, and I'm really innocent here right now. Look at him. How adorable. Let's stroke his cheek. Let's pat him on the head. He's worried about rules being broken. He thinks only one institution up there is breaking the rules. Well, it's not that. It's just if you're watching this show to hear my opinion, I've heard about the stuff that got reported today being done for a long time, not just in the Big Ten. I've heard of coordinated efforts. Look, you don't think people in the SEC coordinate to try and take Nick Saban down? Are you serious? That stuff's done all the time. I don't really care that you have the information. And I don't really care that you share the information. That's the price you pay for being on top. I care how you got the information. You know, if you sat there and watched TV copy of Alabama games and they were that loose and sloppy with their signals versus hacking into a database, well, that would be two different things, wouldn't it? And so I didn't really care when I read these reports today, all due respect to the work, and it was very thoroughly and sourced work. I didn't really care. I didn't gasp. I didn't look at it and say, Well, now we know Paul Harvey style the rest of the story. I just said, well, how'd they get the information? Did they also send, excuse me, they didn't send anyone. Did a rogue staffer take it upon himself? And let me emphasize, go rogue. And did he just, did did they all have guys go rogue and go to another stadium and, and videotape this sort of thing? How did they get it? It's really still all I care about. I've never seen what Michigan has been accused of doing, if that's the way it went down. I have seen what 
uh, Rutgers and Purdue and Ohio State and the like were accused of doing today. Seen that several times. So I didn't really get worked up about that all that much. But this dropped when it did for a reason. Like I strangely am not even worried about what got reported today as it relates to Michigan. What's going to happen to Michigan, I don't necessarily know got changed a whole lot by what got released today. So that's where the racehorse blinders come in for me. I care about what's going to happen to Michigan because I really still feel like they're the only ones punitively on the hook up there. I don't think anyone involved in that report is going to get busted for any of that. And I don't think it's because everyone has an ax to grind out for Michigan necessarily. I just think nothing I read today in and of itself rises to the level of needing to be punished. Now, if it does come to light that those signals were acquired using electronics, therefore illegally obtained. Well, that's a whole other story. No one brought that to me as of, again, 5 o'clock today. So I go back to the Sunday show because on the Sunday show, I told you, I thought the Big Ten imminently would be communicating with Michigan about potential punishment. That got reported like the next day. And so that's happened. And I think it was Pete Thamel. Uh, Monday, who said, don't expect anything for about 48 hours because the Big Ten has to give Michigan 48 hours to respond and to mount a defense and to present their side of the argument and whatever. Um, we're, we're rapidly approaching that deadline. That's still where my focus is. Even in light of all the stuff coming out today, that's still where my focus is. I think that they suggested an extremely harsh punishment for Michigan. I think Michigan looked and called BS immediately on it. And I think that they are planning to mount a very, very strong legal counteroffensive. And I think that's where rubber meets the road because I guarantee you the folks in Schimbeckler Hall believe whatever they're mounting is going to be more than effective enough to stave off any kind of punishment that would derail this current run they're on. And I have it on fairly good knowledge. There are people on the other side of that fence that look at that and say, Okay, you're about to learn a hard, hard lesson in who really swings the bigger hammer here. Now, I sit back, and to me, the law is like weather. And what I mean by that is weather and the law impact just about every one of you, just about every day, and 99% of the population is ignorant about both. I'm ignorant about one of them. I'm pretty good with weather. Atmospheric science, I can talk to you all day. The law, not so much. And I say that only to say, I have no clue how this is going to turn out. And that's where I end that. But I would like to address one more thing. And that is this uh, insinuation. Anytime I talk about this publicly, I'm presenting one side of the argument. And that's kind of been a copy and paste response from the vocal portion of the Michigan fan base publicly about anyone, anyone who's talking about this and doesn't outright paint a script M on your chest is out to get Michigan. Why? Why would I be out to get Michigan? Forget anyone else. I've, I've looked at this accusation one too many times in our live chat or our comment section or in Twitter replies. And it's not, it's not that it keeps me up at night. And it's really not that it, in fact, it doesn't bother me at all. That's totally fine. I'm just curious about it. I'm curious if you truly do believe that someone like me grew up in uh, West Central Georgia, that's, that's my real only affiliation to Columbus. Columbus, Georgia is where I grew up. I have no affiliation to Columbus, Ohio, or the Buckeyes at all. I am very curious what the evidence is you have that someone like me would be out to get Michigan. It's not really being out to get you. It's just seeing the situation outside of the maze and blue bubble and I'm not saying anything different, nor am I feeling any different towards this, as you would if it were Nebraska or Arizona. Just pick a random school out there. I know when it comes to your doorstep, it's a little bit different. And when it comes to your doorstep, you have an angle, you're emotionally invested, whereas otherwise you wouldn't be. Uh, you know, it is possible for someone to have a differing point of view than you without them being out to get you. I'm not out to get Michigan. Let me tell you what's in my best interest. Michigan winning football games is in my best interest. And doing it clean. And doing it out of this really, really weird, tainted spotlight that's on the program right now. Yeah, that gets you some traffic in the short term. 
I don't care about that because it's not the kind of show we like to do. I like to do the kind of show that we'll do in about 20 minutes when we preview Michigan versus Penn State, and we're just talking about a football game. That's what I would prefer. So no one on this show is out to get you, but it just doesn't look good, and it hasn't for a while, and none of the most popular uh, defense stances that the Michigan fan base has taken make much sense to me. I get your point. I just don't think they're grounded in any kind of logic-based reasoning. That's what I think, and you're free to disagree. That's what God invented the comment section for.